This is part 10 of our series on how to use Ultimaker Cura for complete beginners. In this video, we will learn how to set up the Mark 85 Iron Man helmet designed by Akira on a small print bed. We'll start by getting our files. Now, this Iron Man helmet has three parts to it. And I've actually already shown you how to set up the face mask part of this print in part four of this series. And so I'm only going to show you how to do the top and the chin in this video. Let's start with the top. Now, you'll notice that on this specific printer, the top of the helmet is actually too big for the printer, at least in its standard orientation. Let's go ahead and drag it onto the printer. And let's switch to our rotate tool and let's rotate it so that it fits on the printer. Now, you can see as you orient it, it now turns yellow and that's because it can fit in this orientation on the print. But I don't like it exactly at this height, mainly because I still have to deal with the supports in the letters here. I'm going to go ahead and keep rotating it down until I don't have to deal with the letters. And you might think, well, now it doesn't fit on the bed. But I think we can actually fix that on this printer itself, on this Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro. Let's drag it backwards a little bit, and then maybe just a tad bit forward. And there you go. Now it fits on the bed. And we won't need any supports for these letters. Now, we could have just blocked these letters, but I think this is a little bit faster. And so the question is, is what supports do we want and what supports do we not? Now, clearly we want supports underneath the bottom here just so the print can get started. Um, obviously, we're going to want these supports here at the top because there's nothing underneath it. I don't think it's going to hurt to have these supports here or these supports here or even these supports right here. They're going to be very thin and therefore very easy to break off. You might argue that the overhang is small enough that it doesn't matter, but I'm going to go ahead and leave those supports. The only supports that I'm actually going to block are the tops of the circles for the magnets, because as we've learned, circles will actually finish themselves off very well, at least the tops of them in 3D prints. And so we'll block them on this side, and we will block them on this side. And then I'm just going to check my settings here. A 10% infill with normal supports at 65 degrees with a 2 millimeter raft is probably perfect. The only reason why we need a raft is just so the supports have something to adhere to on the plate. I'm going to go ahead and hit slice. A few moments later. And if I close this out and go to preview, you can see that this is going to be a print slightly under a day with slightly less than 300 grams of filament. If we check these supports building up, it looks like they're going to work great. If we check our layers as it comes up, you can see that we do have a raft holding up all of our supports as they come up so they have something to adhere to. This print will work just fine. That's all there is to setting up the top. We can go ahead and save this and set this up on our printer. Let's get rid of this and set up the chin next. So if I go to open, I'll select my chin. Now as for the chin, I'm actually going to turn it vertical. And let's take a look at what supports we need and what supports we don't. As for the bottom, we definitely want all of these supports down here because we need to start the print somehow. I don't mind having these small supports for these overhangs as well. I don't see the need in blocking any of them. You can, but they're so small that it's just really time consuming. And I just, I don't think that it's going to cause any issue. You'll see when we're done slicing. If we look at these two overhangs here and over here, definitely want supports for those two overhangs. Um, I don't mind having these supports on the sides just to have something for it to build off of as it goes up. It probably won't be a problem. 
definitely want these supports right here. You might think it's going to bridge, but you'll notice that it's not actually going in a straight line. And so as it builds up, it's not going to bridge. This overhang up here, I can probably block um, these overhangs on the inside. We can definitely block and obviously the circles and also these letters. So let's go ahead and get started blocking these things, starting with the circles, just like before on both sides. And as I said earlier, we can definitely block these overhangs here and probably get away with blocking these overhangs on the outside as well. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just put one down and instead of putting a bunch down here, I'm just gonna resize this. And so we'll go to scale and make sure uniform scale is off and let's drag it sideways. And if I change my view, I should have an easier time making it bigger in this direction. And then I also want to make it bigger in this direction. And I should just be able to drag it to the right. And it's still not quite big enough to block both sides. So we can make it just a tad bit bigger here. And so we want it blocking both the insides and the outsides. Maybe like that. There we go. We got both ends blocked. And the only other thing I want to block is actually just these letters here. You'll notice that I used one support blocker for both sides. I can actually repeat that. I'm going to right click on this and go to multiply selected to give myself a second one of these wide support blockers and select it. Grab my move tool and drag it down. And then I should just be able to rotate it at 45 degrees and put it in place. Now you'll notice that it's bigger than it needs to be, which could be problematic because it's also blocking now parts of this support here. Um, it's probably not that big a deal, but I'm going to go ahead and fix it. You'll notice that if I go to scale and try to size it up in one direction now, it actually changes the size diagonally. I'm going to hit control Z to undo. In order to resize these diagonal support blockers, we need to rotate it back to horizontal before we do it. So I'm going to go back to this horizontal position and then scale it down by dragging it inwards quite a bit. And then I should be able to rotate it back to 45 degrees and test to see how I did. And I can just go back and forth until I get it the way I like it. But this is actually pretty close to perfect. I think let's see here. If I now drag it up and forward just a little bit, am I blocking all of my letters? And the answer is yes. What about on the other side? The answer is yes. And most importantly, I'm not blocking this support over here on either side. And so I'm actually not going to be worried about any of the other supports. I think you'll see what I'm talking about if I slice this. Let's go ahead and hit slice moments later and go to preview um, you'll notice that if I go into my settings I didn't change any of my settings I still have a two millimeter raft I still have a normal support with 65 degree overhang and I still have a 10 percent infill but if you look why I didn't block some of these supports you can hopefully see that I like having some supports. I probably could have gotten away with blocking this. And in fact, I might go back and block this. But I like having these supports build up as it goes up. It just gives it that side support as it goes up. We probably could have got away with blocking these supports over here. Definitely needed these supports right here. Hopefully that's obvious for why we needed this specific support here. I am going to go and block this one real quick. Go to prepare. And I want to block specifically that small little overhang right there. And I'll do it on both sides. And hit slice again. More moments later. And let's check preview now. And I like this a little bit better. There's not that extra tiny support there on the back. Um, you might be asking yourself, why do I use individual support blockers sometimes versus one big one that I resize? And it's just preference. Um, what do I think I can get done with the fastest and will be the most efficient in setting it up? And it's sort of a judgment call. Um, you could have easily done this by putting just six or seven supports on this side and six or seven supports on this side and done the exact same thing. Same thing up here, maybe seven or eight supports across the way on both ends. I just, 
I have set this print up so many times. I have a way that I set it up. But let's take a look down here. It says it's going to take 15 hours to print and only about 150 grams to print. If we look at the preview, I want to show you something. You'll notice that it only is infilled by 10%, which means it's mostly hollow and empty on the inside. But what I want to draw your attention to is the wall on both sides. You can see that the wall is just two lines thick, and that's what's going on right here, this wall line count of two. We can actually change the infill or the wall line count, and let's look at the difference. So right now, with a two wall line count and an infill density of 10, we are at 15 hours and 150 grams. What happens if we go to 100% infill and hit slice? A little later. You'll see now that we're up to one day and five hours, almost 30 hours basically. So we basically doubled our time and we almost doubled our amount of filament. And you'll see why if you look at your layers, it completely fills in the gap. It is in no way hollow on the inside. Now let's compare that to back to a 10% infill, but with a wall line count of let's say four and it slice. You get the idea. And now you can see that it's only slightly above 200 grams of filament, and it'll only take about 18 hours. So it added about 60 grams of filament and about three hours to the print. But if you look at the difference now, now the wall is thicker, giving you a sort of exoskeleton. And the best part is, is where you get to the thinnest parts, basically the weakest parts of this print, it is basically 100% infilled if you think about it. And so there's a bit of a trade-off increasing your wall line count versus increasing your infill on time and filament, but depending on what you're printing, it might be worth it to change one versus the other. But that's more or less how to set up the top and the chin of the Mark 85 Iron Man mask made by Akira. Like I said, if you want to know how to set up the face mask, we actually cover that one in part four of this series, so you can go back and watch that. But with that, you should know everything you need to know to print your own Iron Man mask. And you're that much closer to setting up your own working Iron Man helmet.